In this video, we will demonstrate the manual defibrillation method on the LifePak 35 for ALS clinicians. So let's say that you arrive on scene, there are ALS clinicians on scene from the start, so we don't need to utilize the AED mode. First thing that we'll do, uh, we'll follow our cardiac arrest procedures and then very quickly we'll get the pads on the patient. So in this case, we'll say that the pads have been placed on the patient. We're on the home screen currently. And down here in the bottom, you'll see this bright yellow button that says manual defib. That's what we're going to press because we do not want to go in a, uh, AED mode since we have an ALS clinician on scene. When I press that, my defib menu comes up. A couple things to keep in mind here, okay? First off, you'll see the Start CPR button. If you press that button, that is going to start your timer, okay? And remember, it would also start your metronome and ventilation reminder, but you can turn that feature off by pressing the Mute button. But you do want to start the Start CPR button so that you get a reminder every two minutes when it is time to rotate, when it's time to do your rhythm analysis, et cetera. Here on the side, because I'm currently in adult mode, it is automatically set at 360 joules. Remember, in 2024, we made the change as a state and as a local jurisdiction in Howard County that we no longer progress up from 200 to 300 to 360 joules. We now automatically, when there is a shockable rhythm present, start at 360 joules, and that is the energy that we deliver throughout the remainder of the incident until we no longer have a, a shockable rhythm. So that's why that is set there. Um, if we were changing that, which we would not, it's just simply using your finger to go around the dial here, and you can see that I can change that. But really, there's no reason for us to do that because we're starting at 360 and it automatically is going to be there. We've gone ahead and programmed that to show that way. Now, if we had a pediatric patient, we still do need to adjust the joules for um, the amount that we're going to defibrillate them at. Two, four, six is currently two joules per kilogram, four joules per kilogram, et cetera, as we go up. That still stays the same. So that is when I would need to do my adjustment of my joules to whatever the uh, current energy is that I'm going to deliver that. And remember, we can easily figure that out by using the Hand Heavy app to see what is the appropriate joules for that uh, age slash weight patient. So right now we're just going to assume that I have an adult patient. So once that's done, okay, again, CPR Insight will be on. So one of the features of the LifePak 35 is CPR Insight, which you see here that I have switched on. When CPR Insight is on, the LifePak 35 through a proprietary method is able to read the rhythm underneath the CPR. And so what you see that it's done here, I'll let this finish charging, okay, is that I'm going to go ahead and shock. And so when CPR Insight is on, what it does is it reads the underlying rhythm while CPR is still ongoing, whether it's being ongoing via a Lucas or manual CPR, so that Basically, we can continue compressions without ever stopping. So basically, once we start compressions, okay, and or have the Lucas on, we can continue that until the end of the code, whether we get ROSC or whether we terminate resuscitation. CPR Insight is a proprietary method similar to what is in the current Zoll monitors that allows the machine to look at the rhythm underneath the CPR. So what it does, as you saw here, is when that's turned on, when it gets to the end of that two-minute cycle, this machine, even though I'm in manual mode currently, will automatically, uh, about 10 to 15 seconds prior to when it would be time for the ALS clinician to do the shock at the end of that two-minute cycle, it automatically reads that rhythm, and it automatically pre-charge if it sees a shockable rhythm. So in this case, on the screen when it pre-charged, it was showing a shockable rhythm. So it automatically pre-charged on its own. 
And then it will not shock, though, until the clinician actually presses that button. So it alleviates the issue with us currently where in our part practice, someone uh, about 15 minutes prior to the end of the two-minute cycle, excuse me, 15 seconds prior to the end of the two-minute cycle, presses that charge button. Um, now it automatically charges if it sees a, a shockable rhythm. That being said, it's important for the ALS clinician to actually confirm on the screen, to use their clini clinical knowledge to confirm that, that it true it is indeed a shockable rhythm. And then that's why there's the safety mechanism here that it will not shock until the clinician has actually pressed the shock button. So it will pre-charge for you, but it will not actually shock. So one of the things to, to keep in mind is that in order for us to see that rhythm, okay, we still will have to stop CPR at this time. This device is currently, and that feature specifically, is currently waiting for FDA approval. When the FDA approval comes through, similar to the current Zoll models on the market, we as ALS clinicians will no longer have to stop CPR in order to do a rhythm analysis because we will see both our rhythm with the CPR ongoing as well as our rhythm underneath that CPR insight which the machine is showing because if I was doing CPR on this patient you would see the big waves uh, of CPR and you wouldn't clearly see that uh, ventricular fibrillation the only way for me to see that is to actually stop CPR even though the CPR insight is uh, on so while it is reading and doesn't show us what's underneath. We still, as ALS clinicians, need to confirm that, yes, indeed, this is a shockable rhythm. And currently, the only way to do that until the process is FDA cleared is by actually stopping compressions. So the message is this. Currently, as ALS clinicians, in order to confirm what this is seen in uh, CPR Insight, we have to stop compressions and actually read on here, even though that this is saying in CPR Insight that yes, you can shock. The plan is, according to Stryker, that soon we will have CPR Insight actually uh, approved by the FDA and then you and I will not need to stop CPR, which hopefully will lead to gains in individuals who obtain ROSC uh, because we maintain that CPR. Because remember, even as it is currently, the, uh, even during a shock, we don't stop the Lucas device. Okay? Now, if we were doing manual CPR, certainly we would stop because we don't want hands on the chest when we're shocking. But with, in this case, when we have a Lucas on, we shock right over that Lucas. The only time that we're stopping currently is during analysis. We get right back on the chest when it's charging, and when it's shocking, if we're using the Lucas, we continue right along on the, the chest. So um, hopefully we will soon get to the point with CPR Insight where you and I will not have to stop CPR from the minute that we start compressions until the minute that the code ends. Okay? And so now you understand CPR Insight, it will have pre-charged. If for some reason you don't have the CPR Insight on, then at the end of that two minute cycle, you can go ahead and press your charge button and then your shock, okay? Just as you would with the LifePak 35, or excuse me, the LifePak 15 cardiac monitor. So it's okay if you don't have CPR Insight on, you would just need to have someone still pre-charge 15 seconds ahead of time and then you can always dump your charge. So real quick, let's show that process. So let's say that I've pre-charged here. So it's pre-charged. And let's say that uh, for whatever reason, I've looked at this and I'll give an example here. Now we're in a non-shockable rhythm. So I want to dump this charge, okay? All I have to do to dump is just press the toggle button in and then that dumps the charge, okay? Um, it does not automatically dump the charge like the LifePak 15s do. You have to go ahead and just press this in, otherwise it will continue holding that charge. So if you're not using CPR Insight, then you can still charge 15 seconds prior to, or 10 seconds prior to the time for rhythm analysis, and then if you decide, okay, it's not a shockable rhythm, you can just dump it by pressing the uh, toggle button.
And that is manual uh, defibrillation method for the LifePak 35.